Hello guys, it's Bivs here from SlideNerd. In this video, I'm gonna talk about how we can integrate Xcode with GitHub through the GUI. Two things before we start. First, we're also there on Udemy. The link is right below in the description of this video where we'll add practical courses. Second, if you go to our channel SlideNerd, if you go to playlist, you will find this video along with the rest of the videos under the iOS Swift tutorial for beginners. There's also a Swift playlist here by Anki. Let's get started. We want to store our Hello World app on GitHub. Now GitHub needs an account and it's free to create. But more than that, we also need a tool that is going to let us upload the project to GitHub called Git. If you take a look, you can just simply go to Google and type download Git here. Once you do that, you will find there's a link that is git-scm.com slash downloads. If you take a look at this, there are four links, Mac, Windows and Linux and Solaris. Now in my case, I'm using Mac, so I'm going to download the version for Mac over here. It says download Git. Once I do that, I'll say click here to download manually. And you will notice that the download begins on the left hand bottom side over here. There you go, the file has started downloading. So I have downloaded the Git installer here on my desktop. I'm just going to double click it and it's going to start verifying the downloaded file. Once the verification is complete, you will notice that it has a single .pkg file inside it. Once you double click on the file, you notice this message that says this file is not from a trusted developer. I can click OK and I can disable this option by going down into my system preferences. From the system preferences, I'm going to select security. So once I open the security and privacy tab, you notice right now it says allow apps downloaded from Git was blocked from opening because it was not unidentified. So I'll click open anyway. And at this point, the installer pops open. I'm going to just hit continue over there and click install. Once done, it's going to ask me the password and I will enter the password and I will say install software. Once that is done, you will notice the installation takes place. It says validating and it finally says the installation was successful. Let's close and see how we can use this. How do we verify if the installation took place or not? Just press command space and type terminal in your spotlight search. Once you do that, you are taken to the terminal command here. Let's type git and see what do we get. If it says it's not recognized as a command, then that means git was not installed successfully. But in my case, it gives me the list of all the options that are available and that means git is working. The next thing that I'm going to do is go to GitHub and go under the repository section after logging in. Here, I will create a new repository and give it a name. Once done, I won't give a description and I especially won't initialize this repository with a readme. I will hit create repository and as you notice, this gives me a URL here. I'm going to copy this URL to clipboard and I'm going to go back to Xcode. Over here, I will jump to the source control option and I will try to commit. Now, once I hit commit here, you notice at the bottom, it says no remotes available, which means I have not configured GitHub where I can add this project. So first we need to configure that. The way we do that is go back and we'll hit cancel right now and we'll take the source control part at the top and go to this branch which is called the master branch. In this, I will hit configure hello world and once done, you notice it has three tabs here. It gives me the info of my project and it gives me the option to add remotes over here. I will just click the plus button to add a remote from over here and I will give the name as hello world from slider. I will paste the address that I copied from over there and I will say add remote here. Once you notice, you get this error which says fail, fatal, hello world from SlideNerd is not a valid remote name. Now I need to ensure that the name over here matches pretty much. So I'm going to go back, click OK. Once again, I will click add remote here. And this time I will enter the proper name, which would be hello world. Once I do that, I enter my URL at the bottom here in the address bar and click add remote. You notice that the remote has been added. I will click done over here. Once done, I'll go back and go to my option source control where I'm going to click commit right now. When I click commit right now, you notice at the bottom now, it gives me the option saying push to remote and it gives me the hello world master over here. I will select that option and give my message here saying this is my first commit or something like that. Once done, I'll zoom back and go on the right hand side here where it says commit the 14 files and push. You can also take a look at what those files are here at the top corner which would include basically my project files that I've been building so far. So going, I'm going just going to hit the commit, commit 14 files and push button over there. 
and it's going to take some time to push all the data to github so once done i can go back to my github.com in the same repository and just hit refresh and at this point you notice our project has been added to github so now that you've seen what we have done integrating xcode with github let's take a look at what git and github is all about so here you have several developers who are working on different files if you're making a large app it's quite possible that you have several files and you have several developers working together on those files. Now what happens when two people save the same file in a different way or edit the same file? That goes completely haywire, right? And that's why we have something called a version control system. Git and GitHub just exist for that. So Git is just one of the ways you can do it. For example, you notice this nice meme here that talks about two people trying to modify the same file and decide which one is final. A version control system, as people call it, is like your Facebook timeline. It keeps a copy of all the files that have been modified over the past year or six months or whatever. And also keeps a track of the people who have been modifying the same file over a given period of time. So put those two things together and you get this nice complex idea where there are several files and each file can be modified by several people and everything is being kept track of. So there are two types of version control systems. One of them being a central version control system where each person working on their PC is simply going to have what you call as a working copy. And they're all going to commit or make changes and those changes are finally going to be saved inside this place on the left called repository. And there's one more, which is the distributed version control system. Now, in this case, a person changes or saves the changes in a local copy called the repository. And all the local copies are being merged together to give you the final copy. And that is what Git is all about. It's a distributed version control system. Now, this video is by no means a complete description of what things you can do with Git. However, it's a starting point. So there are three main things that you need to keep in mind. First of all, whatever project or folder that you're currently working with is the working directory. There is something called a staging area. Here you simply decide what changes you need to commit and what you don't. For example, it's like your packers and movers. People come at your house, you only decide which things go to the new place and which don't get shipped. And that's what staging area is all about. And you use this command called add, that is git add, to make sure that the files that you want go into the staging area. And then when you say commit, you're going to simply save your file in the local repository. Let's take a nice example to understand creatively what Git is all about. You have a project which is basically your giraffe. A person is going to fork this giraffe and that means copy that giraffe and add a tiger head to it. And this is going to stay on that person Gene's computer. When they click push, that change is going to be saved in the main copy on the remote server. And therefore, this time your giraffe has been turned into a tigraphy. And then once again, the other person Sam is going to create a copy of that tigraphy on his working space or computer by doing using the fork command out there. And then he's going to add peacock feathers to that tiger head and finally push those changes to the remote server, which is going to turn your giraffe into a PT graphy. A file can be in four different states if you're using a version control system. First state is obviously untracked, which simply means that the version control system doesn't care whether your file is being modified or being edited or anything like that. The second stage you have is unmodified and that is when you tell Git or the version control system that you want this file to be tracked. And at that point, if you edit some, edit the file in some way, you try to add something, you remove something, that file becomes modified. Then you decide whether this modified file should be saved in the local repository or not. If that is the case, you prepare it for staging when it goes to the staging area and then you commit the file indicating that the file should be put inside the local repository. The complete process looks a bit like this. You are currently working inside a folder in Xcode, which would be your workspace. You use the git add command to indicate that you're interested in tracking that file and you're preparing that file to launch it. It goes into the staging area at this point. Then you use the git commit command to indicate that you want to save the file to your local repository. You can directly commit the file from the workspace without doing a git add. And at this point, you indicate that you want to push the file into the remote repository. And that is where things happen. That is, things jump from your Xcode to your GitHub and put the file in the right place. And once you feel that you need, need the file again, you can pull the file back by using the git clone or git pull command out there. And again, I'll be discussing a lot more about version control systems and Git in a separate video because it's going to take a whole series to cover that. But this video for now should be sufficient to get you guys started with Xcode and Git.
So in this video, we covered Xcode GitHub integration. You can Google us out by saying Slidenode Udemy, where we add all our practical stuff, our social accounts on Slidenode Twitter, Slidenode Facebook, which you can Google out again. And all the code is out there on GitHub, which you just saw in this video. If you like what you saw, please like this video, share this video, subscribe to Slidenode and let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Have a nice day.